This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Contractor ever tell you the price of something and it sounds so high you think, "Eh, maybe I'll try it myself. Some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech. This is Abram Nanny with Sabir abdul Haq, an IT expert. Today on Everyday Tech, the server is open. We want to take the time to answer your tech questions. Did you get a new phone you don't know much about? Thinking about buying a personal computer? Maybe your TV went out and you're looking at getting a new one. In the meantime, we have a list of apps you could use to help you achieve your 2024 goals, which we'll talk about between your calls and emails. Email everydaytech at mpbonline.org if you have any questions or comments. Don't forget about the Talk to Us feature on the MPB Public Media app where you can record a voice or video message and send it straight to us at Everyday Tech. Now, Sabir, I am determined to eventually get a Talk to Us message at some point. (laughs) I, I, You know, with with the show that we've got, I feel like it, it should be the priority. It would be it would be really amazing to be able to hear such, you know, you know, feedback and hear everything in real time. That would be dope. That would be great. I would love it. Yeah. We got to get us one. Yeah, for sure. So if you're listening, check out the MPB Public Media app and get us a talk to us. Be the first one to get on Everyday Tech through the talk to us. We get the phone calls, though. The phone calls. We do get the phone calls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, We get the phone calls. Yeah. Which speaking of calls, you are you are on a call right now. We're on Skype. And, uh, you know, I always ask you how you're doing and you say fighting those fires. And I got to I got to ask uh, how busy you are this morning to have to be on Skype right now. So I try to I try really hard and I I impress upon people. There's a difference between busy and productive. True. I'm very productive. (laughs) It's been a very productive (laughs) morning. Put it that way. Uh, Since about a good probably about 630 this morning. Been uh just getting a few things done, like I said, fighting some fires and everything else. So, but uh just you know grateful to be here and get everything going. Uh, and yeah, I'm glad to be on the call, be able to anxious, well ready and ready and willing and to jump in any questions or anything else that happens. But it's it's been a it's been a day. It's been a day already. Yeah. It's, it's it ain't, it ain't nowhere near lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a break yet. Eh? Nah, nah. Yeah. Well, I I gotta say, man, I was. I was listening to Fix It earlier, and I I, yeah. I love them, and but I had to turn it off. They're talking about injuries and in the workplace and construction and yeah. stuff. I had to I had to mute it for a second because yeah, it just it just is some rough stuff gruesome. sometimes. Gruesome, gruesome, and then and 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 injuries happen everywhere. Like that's you know even like people say in the tech field, oh y'all techies don't do nothing but sit in a chair and click on the keyboard. Y'all don't do any y'all don't do any real work. Uh, no. We right. have to carry 150, 100, 100, 125, 150 pound server blades, or not blades, uh, full server uh, off the rack. Sometimes we're carrying 40, 50, 60 pound computers. Sometimes we're carrying monitors. Sometimes there's there's a lot of physical things and everything. So I really hope everyone, no matter what your background is, no matter what you're doing, you're being safe in it, uh, and and you know know that there's no injuries. We don't want anybody getting hurt. So right. yeah. Yeah, that is rough. Yeah, I mean it can happen anywhere, and but yeah. like like I was I was in construction for a while, and uh, kind of the reason that I left construction for a little bit was because of an injury. So, oh wow! Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I don't think that. I told you. you. I I fell off a roof and broke my femur myself. Wow, um, bro! Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that that's that's I, when I was younger. I used to play. I mean, I play. When I was younger. I used to work with carpenters and do different things and learned a lot with with electricians, carpenters, stuff like that. And that just it's so quickly how unfortunately something unfortunate can happen. But mm-hmm. props and shout out to uh, Fix It uh, for you know. Pro- I'm sure I, I missed the show from all the calls I've been doing this morning for other stuff, but I'm sure they talked about some tips about how to be safe. So props to the good folks that fix it this morning for, for I'm sure they, they gave some great tips and hope you can, t- I didn't know that about you falling off the roof, man, mm-hmm. but hopefully you continue to stay on the man. <laughs> hopefully I continue to stay off the roof too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you missed any of that, check out uh, the fix it podcast later today. That'll oh, be yeah. up. Um, folks, so Sabir, folks. we've been doing this long enough. I think our listeners want to know more about Sabir. So, oh, okay. so I okay. got to ask you, man, how did you get into 
doing this IT thing that like I know you said that you and your buddy kind of had like a like this little computer interest I guess mm-hmm. yeah me and my good friend uh, Ziad uh, yeah, he didn't have no problem with saying his name my good friend Ziad we were out he we lived in uh, near Hattiesburg uh, he's from Hattiesburg but um, Z and I used to we were eight nine years old and we would take apart computers back in the days when floppy disks were actually floppy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's bef- bit before your time there. Yep, yep. Like, but uh, <laughs> but like the disks were like uh, fi- those five and a quarter, five and a half inch floppies where they were actually floppy. You can grab the end of it and they would actually flop in your hand. And you can put the disk inside. You would slide the disk inside, little square disk, slide the disk inside, flip a toggle switch. A red toggle switch, and I still remember it like it was yesterday. This computer was probably about the size of, I don't know, something that you could, uh, something that you could put in the in the trunk of your car. Like the, mm-hmm. it was a little, it was a little bit. It was probably about hey, it would, it would take up half the size of a, of a of a sedan's car space, or maybe a third of the size of a, of a sedan of a sedan's car space. That was the first computer, and we would take the computer apart. We was learning. We were learning about different things. Of course, this is before the age of Google, right? right. So there, there was no YouTube. There was no Google. Uh, that's kind of how that went. And we started from there and just really building a sense of understanding. I, I used to, and then of course, but this was the age of Radio Shack. <laughs> so, uh, so we would get those Radio Shack kits and understand how electricity works safely. We would understand uh, uh, how things worked and, and, and electrical components and things. Uh, started working, you know, fooling around with that. I went to Southern Miss. I spent my time at Southern Miss. Um, graduated in 2002, Southern Miss to the top. Um, and uh, graduated in 2002, used to do IT stuff there. Uh, every now and then worked with University Activities Council. Uh, I started working on friends, girlfriends, family members, all these different things. Like folks would have computer issues then, but my actual track was technical writing. And technical writing is the art of explanation, uh, right, which is right. actually what my degree is in. My training, my certifications have been in IT, but I think sometimes my colleagues and I could do better about communicating and explaining what a problem is to folks. Just like how I know Jermaine and I have our, when I, and even when, when we have uh, uh, folks that call in on the phone lines, we, I try to use analogies a lot. That's my technical communication writing, my technical communication brain coming in, trying to be able to say, how can I explain this technical thing so that someone understands it? Worked for, uh, once I graduated, came up here, worked for a, a nonprofit uh, doing technical training uh, with community folks uh, on the community side and started working a lot of contractual jobs for a lot of telecommunications firms until I've been where I am now. And I've been there for 15 years, well, 14 years, 14 years in July. Yes, Sabir, you know you got to break it down in layman's terms for me or else I will not get it. (laughs) It is funny. I was talking to a client of mine in Atlanta yesterday, and they did not understand what an IT project management build goes around. They have property in a rural part of Georgia, and they wanted to be able to set everything up. And they were like, well, why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? And I was trying to be able to say, we can't set it up because there is no broadband access in that area. But they mm-hmm. didn't understand that there's a farm or there's a house within eyesight that you can be able to see, that you can be able to set up. And they've got Wi-Fi fine. How come we can't have it here? I'm like, well, we talked to a, a couple of telecommunications companies, and they told us, yeah, if you pay for a $20,000, $30,000, $50,000 build, then yes, we can establish it there. Yeah, no problem. No No problem. Just go and cut (laughs) a check. We'll go ahead and get it going. No. So uh, I had to, I had to, Jermaine, like you're saying, I had to break it down. Imagine somebody that lives in a desert. Of course, there's probably water in some underground oasis somewhere, but think about the energy and the effort and the resources it's going to take to get to that water, Mm -hmm. get it to a point where it can actually accumulate, and then people can actually draw from it. That was me. And then, so I had two or three other people, they were kind of like, well, what do you mean? This is this, 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 this. I'm like, analogy. My brain was analogy, analogy. Ah, well water. So I had to put that analogy. It was like, oh. Okay. Right. <laughs> so it worked out. And I, I love 
being in this as long as I have. Uh, I think I, I made my first website when I was 19. Like I said, I've been taking apart computers when I was nine, nine, 10 years old. Um, I think that for me, I love to see that light come on in people's eyes when they're like, oh, okay, I get it. That makes sense. You know, okay, wow, okay. This, and they actually have a genuine understanding. That means the world to me. Not only did I get folks past their xenophobia and get past, get folks past where, you know, I, I didn't understand that. And sometimes they'll shut down or, you know, be a, sometimes even angry or fearful mm-hmm. because they don't understand something. I think it, 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 it means the world to me that they actually did get it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, it's so like, you it, know, it me trying to explain making my mom toggle between her Wi-Fi on her cell phone and on and <laughs> off with it. And so I have to say it's the rainbow. Remember, right. turn the rainbow on or turn the rainbow off. So, yeah. The, <laughs> the rainbow. Explain to me the rainbow. Oh, the, 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 the symbol, uh, yeah, it the looks symbol. like a rainbow. Yeah. You know what, Jermaine, you have a career in IT because I never would. I've been doing this. I always say the waves with the signal. I didn't think about rainbow. Yeah, rainbow. But no, not a career in IT. I'll just set them up for you and then you knock them out. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, Spear. Y'all, you need a you need a little tandem thing going Excellent. on. Yes, it will be it'll be it'll be tag team. All right, you you set them up, I knock them down. Okay, I got you. Perfect. We'll make it happen. Perfect. We'll make it happen. Email your questions or comments to everydaytech at mpbonline.org where you can attach a picture or screenshots or whatever to help our guys assess your situation or download the MPB public media app and use the talk to us feature to leave us an audio or video message. Now, one of these days, I'm just going to do a full hour just saying, leave us a talk to us through the MPB (laughs) app. You know what? We'll just or we'll just find a way to to hack the phone lines and send them all to the talk. To right? Us. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Don't beat us up, Kevin. Don't beat us up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so now that we're into February, I'm curious as, as to how everyone's New Year's revol- resolutions are going. Like maybe the yeah. first month it was fun and exciting, and now it's gotten tough, and you're starting to lose motivation. Well, TechCrunch on the first of the year released a list of the top apps you should have to keep up with the most common New Year's resolutions. So between your calls and emails, we'll rattle those off to you and let you know how they can help you achieve your goals. But before we get to that, let's go to Larry in Biloxi on line one. I believe he's having trouble with his keyboard. Larry, is is what's, what you got going on? Yeah. Uh, what's up, I may buddy? have asked this question before, but you know, first... Uh, You've got a new guy on there. He may have some ideas. Uh, I, I do remember those floppy disks that were actually floppy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, built, I built my first computer when I was in high school, and it was actually a binary counter. Uh, it, it had six flip-flops in it. Uh, they were on, made on little Bakelite uh, uh, boards, uh, and you used power transistors because they were easier to get than the other kind of sort of transistors of the day. Had a phone dial on it. You'd dial in two numbers and the lights would flash and it it would add the two numbers and display them in a binary fashion. So I had, mm-hmm. had a lot of fun with computers over the years. Yes. Anyway, the problem, I, the problem I got now, it's, and I may have, like I said, I may have asked this question before. Uh, I've got an ASUS uh, laptop computer. And the best I can tell is a Microsoft update turned off the keyboard. And I have yet to figure out how to turn the thing back on. You guys ever heard of that? I, I believe, did we talk before? I think we may yeah. have talked. I'm, I'm the same gentleman. Did we talk? This was uh, toward the end of 2023. Did, did we talk yeah, about this issue? Have, yeah, we may have talked about the same issue before. But like I say, it sounds like you got a new guy on there. No, it's still me. Yeah, it's still, it's still, still us. It's still us. It's still us. It's still us. Still so, the same guys. Huh? <laughs> yes, it is. All right. it's still so, us. Do you? In, in that case, have you come up with any answers yet? <laughs> so, and I want to recall. I want to recall. I believe. So you have a laptop. Was it a laptop? I remember you said it was a Windows update that you feel like it removed because uh, we walked through how to be able to go through yeah. your device manager right. and then go ahead and to remove, like to remove and then add it back. Have you tried that? Well, it doesn't even show up on the device manager. Um, it does not show up on the device manager. It's okay. like the keyboard isn't, isn't even there. 
It's one, okay. one night when I did a shutdown and uh, Microsoft wanted to do their update. And right. the next morning when I, when I powered up and, and started it up, the keyboard no longer worked. Okay. Okay. So if you, I don't know if you're near your computer, but if, I don't know if you're near your computer, I'm, if you're near your computer or if you got, if you're not, if you just want to write these instructions down, are you, are you near your computer? Uh, no, I'm not. I was out okay. driving when you guys okay. came on. Okay. So it's basically, uh, and, and it's relatively easy to go to. On any Windows computer, usually in the lower left-hand side of the screen, there is a magnifying glass uh, that you can click on to do search. If you type the words device manager and then strike enter, like it will pop up a box. And in that box right. will show your got, computer name. I've got, I've got the device manager up before, no problem. Right. But if you scroll down, scroll down right below I, I mean, right below I under imaging devices, you'll see keyboards. So if you don't see no, keyboards there. Like I, like I said, the keyboard, keyboard doesn't even show up in device manager. Okay. In that case, then there's something up with what's called your chipset. Um, and, and basically there's something, the chipset basically controls every, every way how your computer would connect to a device, whether it's a mouse, whether it's a monitor, whether it's uh, your keyboard, there's something up with your chipset that may need to be updated. And I think you told us the last time, and, and I was super impressed by you saying this, you said that you had updated your BIOS, correct? Didn't we have that conversation? Right. Didn't you tell us that? I already, so you had already updated. updated the BIOS, yeah. You updated, you updated the BIOS. The last thing to be able to update at that point is the chipset. If it does not work, and and you can roll back, and you, there are Google searches to be able to do it. You can roll back your Windows installation. You can do a quick little YouTube search on how to roll back to the previous version right. of Windows 10. Or I think because I think you had Windows 10. You didn't have Windows 11, did you? You had Windows 10. I had Windows 10 at the time. There's now Windows yeah. 11 on there. Okay, so now you're using Windows 11. Okay, cool. So if you're using that, that's fine. You can still roll back. Uh, to it and see if that pops up. But I would love to discuss with you more. You're on the you're on the coast, or where where are you from, brother? Biloxi. Biloxi. So if you're if you're on the yeah. coast, there are I know there are a couple of folks there on on the coast. I do not know what their workaround times are. I know in Hattiesburg there are some great spots. Up here, I'm in Jackson area. Uh, you know myself and there are other folks that would I mean love to take care of it for you. I just I cannot say what those other folks turn around times for it. But my brain, yeah. if you've already done the BIOS, if you, for some reason, you don't see keyboards in device manager, my thing is either it's a failing chipset or the chipset itself needs to be updated or you can roll back windows. And again, you can look yeah, online on how to be, how to be able to roll back windows. Yeah. Let me, let me run another one by you. It's, okay. uh, is it possible that, that the update turned the service off? So that, so the service doesn't actually start when um, when you boot up the computer. So anything is possible, but I do not recall. I don't know that there is a Microsoft service just for keyboards. Like mm -hmm. I'm actually, I'm looking in the case right now. I'm looking in the case under services. I'm sitting in front of my computer now. There is one for keyboards. I would imagine that the better chance, unfortunately, may have been an issue with the registry. And for those folks who don't know what a registry is, if you're familiar with what they say, the old saying, a bull in a tea shop or a bull in a china shop, the registry is the china shop. <laughs> because it, it's there, there, there are all kinds of ways for things to be able to work. But if you break the right thing, you're going to break it bad. Yeah, stuff and gets so, out of order and whatnot. Stuff gets, so, uh, <laughs> so it... Yeah, yeah, I, I was just, I was breaking, I'm, I, it feels like you knew that, uh, but, but I definitely, I didn't know if some of our listeners would know what a, a registry is, but, so yeah, the registry is very, it, there could be something in the registry, but, and if you said, also, I believe you said that you had another keyboard, you tried to connect another keyboard, is that correct? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've got a Bluetooth keyboard that, Bluetooth uh, that keyboard, I put uh, and use it, and it works just fine. Okay, so the Bluetooth keyboard, la less the Bluetooth keyboard works fine, and this is a laptop. Yeah, it's a laptop. Okay, the other thing is, along with the chipset, now that I'm remembering, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping 
that no liquid got on, no liquid or that it was not exposed to prolonged temperatures, hot or cold, for a long period of time. Because that will also mm-hmm. do it. Because, of course, on the other side of that yeah, keyboard. Go ahead. Not overnight. You know, it was, like yeah. I say, it was in some of my dining room table and mm-hmm. and uh, it, it shut down after the update next morning, sitting right there in a nice warm room. It wouldn't, yeah. uh, the keyboard wouldn't work the next morning. Well, with, if it being an update, Sabir, you know, could it have been an older laptop and then it updating to such a new thing, it could have overheated trying to compensate no, for that? Or I, I, no, The fact a, that he's... Not a real old, it's not a real old laptop. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. If, if his laptop if his laptop was allowed it to do Windows 11, it's not that old. Right. It would have to be... I, I had a client this week that he had a computer that he should have put down about eight years ago. If it was something <laughs> like that old, then... If it was that old, yeah. But from what I hear him saying, no. Nah, if he's got Windows 11 on it, there's if he's got Windows 11 on it, that's completely fine to use. So I, I, I mean, yeah. I, that's that's good thinking, Abram. But I just uh, based on the fact that it's running Windows 11, I would bet lunch chipset to update that chipset. Uh, we're trying to be able. If keyboards is not working, that is definitely something that makes me lean towards the. Uh, there's something up with your registry. And yeah, there was, um, um, yeah, let me jump in here a minute. I, I the, was looking on, looking on the web and I found instructions. There's instructions out there where you can permanently disable your keyboard. And uh, yeah. it's basically a, a change in the registry setting. That's what um, I mean, a registry. One, one, would, one would think that you reverse that process and the keyboard would work again. Yeah. Um, anyway, I went, I went through their guidance there and it, it didn't fix the problem. But, right. um, so yeah, your I, other, I think I think the update changed something in the registry that turned yeah. the keyboard off. Last thing I would recommend, above all else, we call it smoking. And, and I don't know what we call it back in the days when you were using it, brother, but we call it smoking the computer, which means that basically you will refresh, you will reset the computer. I would copy all your files yeah. or every needed things. Just reset your computer back to what's called the. Uh, the out of box experience, or O O B E, the out of box experience, like when you bought it, if you reset it to an out of box experience, that's going to return the computer to the way it was the day you bought it. And yeah, then to and you and you can also you can also do uh, the recovery, like you, I mean not recovery. Uh, you want to use um, oh what do you call it? My brain just took a walk. When when you can basically kind of go back in time, I, I kind of call it like back to the future. It when you go and take your computer back to two weeks, a week, uh, a month, a year, to when you may have a uh, uh, system restore. That's it. If you do a system restore, that's not as dire and not as deep as you doing a reset. Uh, but a system restore is a lot like climbing in your DeLorean and going 88.8 miles an hour <laughs> back to a point in time, you know, following the reference of Back to the Future, of course. But uh, shout out to Doc Brown. But uh, but you yeah. go back in time, basically, to a point where your computer was working fine. That you can do right. that. So it's, a system restore is probably going to be even easier than hunting and searching for your uh, hunting and searching for excuse me, for what you need. And, and the fact that your, your Bluetooth keyboard works, you can still do what you need to do to be able to organize it in case you have to reset it, in case you have to get it back to that out-of-box experience. But something happened to it, and it, you know I don't know that it won't happen again. We'd love to hear from you on a future show, I suppose. But to, to reset it to that out-of-box experience, that is the, the, the last straw, basically, I would say. Right. I'll, I'll explore the uh, system restore. Uh, I may have to resort to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, anyway, appreciate your help, guys. No problem, brother. Yeah, thank you for calling in, Larry. Uh, you know, good job on that, Sabir. I had one little thought, and it was not very relevant. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad nah, I've got you around here. Look, it, it's. I would say that uh, there's more than one way to to really get things done and accomplished mm-hmm. and you just kind of have to have this kind of agile thinking and Larry was he I mean he's, he's very proficient he's I would say he's a pioneer in computing in terms of his history in terms of what's been happening but uh definitely definitely I mean you know don't he, 
it, as long as you constantly keep thinking, keep moving, and like, okay, what you keep turning the solution over in your head. So I'm just glad that it worked out. But no, man, it, there's there's no such thing as a wrong answer. Mm. No such thing as a wrong answer. I, I appreciate you. Those those are kind <laughs> words to me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yes, All right. Indeed. We're glad you found our show, Everyday Tech, on MPB Think Radio. This is Abram Nanny, still here with Sabir Abdul Haq, who's ready to answer your questions. Email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. Now, between your calls and emails, we're talking about goal setting and tracking apps to help you mm-hmm. succeed this morning. Now, Sabir, you're actually the one that got me onto this list yeah. from TechCrunch. Yeah. Now, what a, what what part of the list, which app did, uh, you know, set you off the most? So I really liked Bookly. I don't know if you saw that on that list. I did, um, I did. Bookly was good. I have become, I'm a diehard fan of the sci-fi series, The Expanse, uh, by, uh, by, uh, what was it James, James Corey? Can not I, cannot, cannot but, say that I'm familiar. Uh, and, and it's actually a pen name. That's not even the real name. Right, it's two, right. It's two authors, but they're they're going James Corey Coney. I don't. My brain took a walk. But Bookly is great because I said in this year there are still what four books left in the season. I mean, out of out of the series, and I've got one of them knocked. I've knocked out two of them. I watched the show religiously when it was on uh, when it was on USA and excuse me when it was on Sci-Fi and Amazon. Mm-hmm. I watched it religiously. Did not miss an episode. And then, I mean, it was done so well. Of course, there's differences between the book and the show. But Bookly has become my favorite because you can keep track of all the books you read. And so I've got that one in there. And my goal, one of my goals is to read more this year. I've got some civil rights history stuff. I've got some old English lit stuff. I got some DC Comics stuff. But I'm going to read all those things, and Bookly is going to help me do it. That is one of my uh, New Year's That's resolutions what I'm talking is about. to read more. That's yeah, what I'm man, I got to read. I can't just be sitting in front of a computer all the time. I can't <laughs> just sit up here being uh, um, hit with all this computer monitor light all the time. No, I got to actually read me some books. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Shout, shout out to your public library. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. So yeah, what about so Bookly. Uh, for me, uh, I immediately downloaded the uh, the Smart Jam app because you know okay. I I'm oh, yeah. just like everyone else. I yeah. uh, want to get back into the gym, try to work out more, eat healthier, and whatnot. Just mm-hmm. overall, mm-hmm. live a healthier uh, life. Um, yeah. So the Smart Gym is an I have I've downloaded it. I haven't used it yet. Um, gotcha. Just because I'm trying to get back comfortable. You know, Understood. I have my Understood. reasons. Uh, I got you. Got but you. it is an AI powered personal trainer, which I, t- I mean, if I, that's one of those uses of AI that I think could be very, um, very beneficial to many people, because right, I, right. I, at our gym here we don't have personal trainers. We just have a small gym, um, mm-hmm. and you know you can input on the app like what equipment you've got in front of you, and it'll tell you like, hey, you could do this to reach this goal. And I right, think that's right. a that's a good little benefit, and uh, you know, people that are interested, you know, you can find that on App Store and Google Play and whatnot. I got you, and it and it like I see, and I'm looking on the list too that we were that we talked about. Like I see that it has two routines. I do need to do this because my wife is not only a nurse, but she's also very very uh, amazing when it comes to. She used to be a personal, a physical, excuse me, a personal trainer. Okay, and with a, with a kinesiotherapy background, so she's always saying, "Well, you need to do this, you need to do that." And no, you're not doing it right, and she'll you right. know, get on me about it. So I completely understand it, but this looks cool. I don't know why I didn't jump on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't jump on this. It, one, it's I got did. a it's got a thing where it'll like look at your your smartwatch, take the data from yeah. your smartwatch, and like track right. your steps, your heart rate, and whatnot. Um, I might have to get that. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm trying to be better about that because you know I hope I hope they don't hear this, but my brothers are both very fit and uh, okay. they're they're pretty huge. One of them's a coach at a CrossFit gym, and the other one's uh, just a big dude and. Uh, you know, I'm I'm big in a different way, so <laughs> I try to I, I'm trying my best. 
Yeah. Well, hey, man. Abram, you are strong. You are fit. You are big you just are. like your brothers. Don't you let yes, them let them make you feel yes, bad. Don't, don't let them. And, 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 and if they if they try to wreck you, as we call it, if they try to wreck you, go ahead and show them what for. No, I'm playing. Don't. Yeah. Don't get no. Hurt, I, I'll, <laughs> we uh we haven't we haven't squared up in in too long. So I need yes, to. Indeed. Yes, <laughs> need, indeed. We'll you need sound, to at some point. You sound like you sound like me, my younger brother, and my youngest son. My youngest son wants to fight me every day. I'm like, bro, <laughs> chill out, man. Calm down. I just walked in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's what's up. I, I definitely. I, and when you're talking about that one, speaking of that, I did do Gola. I don't know if you see Gola on that. I list. did. I, I've got it. I it was the the very first one on the list. Mm-hmm. So Gola, one thing I was impressed with about Gola is that uh, I don't know if I did it by accident or whatever or just the way how I did it on my phone because I've also got a Samsung watch and a Samsung phone, Team Android, Um, Team Samsung. Uh, It's some kind of way it also linked to my assistant, Bixby, and I Mm -hmm. didn't know it could do that. I didn't know it could do that. So I'm. it'll tell me, like, for example, like even the screenshot they got is talking about book management. Again, that was one of the reasons why I was looking at that and the other one. One of the things they had on there was book management. Mm-hmm. But they also had other things like saying, like, these are goals you can be able to set, attainable goals you can take. Watch the top five. They got in the screenshot here, watch the top five classic movies. Right. Meditate. Throw out, try new sports. Visit new countries. I should have added that because when I was in Mexico at the end of December, I should have done that. So uh, I forgot about adding that one. Right. But yeah, I I actually had heard about that on an app on Facebook. So it was or an ad, excuse me, an ad on Facebook. So uh, I had seen that one when I saw it on the list. I was like, I just started this and just I started. Mm-hmm. It might have been. It might have been. I was thinking about things to try. It might have been like December. So. Yeah, but it, that's that that's definitely an interesting one right there. I'm, I'm loving it, and like I said, it does pop up uh, on. It, it works with Bixby anyway, which is the Samsung, the Samsung version of Siri or like the you know Google. Right. Assistant. Yeah, the vocal assistant. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I put that it it helps you. Gola is to help you address your more nuanced goals that you can set. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. know, like like it said, like watch the top five classic movies or learn to play an <laughs> instrument. Um, but yeah, it's, you create your own goals and update it yourself. It also has a tool that helps address and remind you of how to accomplish those goals. Yes, indeed. And that's, and that's good because sometimes people may feel that they're not, they may not feel as inspired for whatever, even whatever reason. And then it's got something that's inspirational to be able to do it, uh, Mm -hmm. which is really good, really good, really good. I I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I I think that'd be nice because, uh, you know, a lot of our Southern remedy shows at the beginning of the year talked about new year's resolutions and stuff. Yeah. And they mentioned that, uh, you know, you can't say that your goal for the year is be healthy because it's too broad (laughs) of a goal. Like you got to get specific about it. So if you, you know, you get on one of these apps and say like, uh, I want to walk 10 minutes a day, you know, five days a All week, right. go for a I 10 minute you. walk. That, right, right, that right. is more specific. You can do that. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people set their goals to be like, you know, uh, I'm going to start by walking 10 minutes because I want to be able to walk a 5k by the end of the year. You know, something something like that. Yeah, and then something just something that's attainable. But then if it's also going, it's also going to remind you. And like I said, it uh, mine like so Bixby will remind me. Let's say if I've been sitting too long or whatever, my watch is going to be like, hey, don't you want to get up and stretch your arms or whatever? The second, third, right? Gola is going to actually keep track of that as well. So yeah, it's it's a it's a really interesting one. Okay, it's really interesting. I like yeah. that one. One other, uh, one other uh, thing I want to add about not only Gola, which reminds me of another one called Dalio. I don't know, have you ever heard of that? I don't it's, think so. It's, it's not on the TechCrunch list, at least. So it's not on the te- it's not on the TechCrunch list, but it's something I highly recommend in terms of just thinking about mental health and everything else. Mm-hmm. Dalio kind of says like tr- it tracks your day. It's like what have you done today? Meditate. You know, you can do things. That, uh, set goals. Did you go out to eat? Did you spend time with family? Did you give gifts? Did you meditate? Uh, and then it even has a way of doing. At the end of it, it's a journal. There's a journal on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and and I love. 
I love writing. I do love writing and analog writing and everything. But you can also, because you're using your phone, you can use your voice dictation to fill out your journal to be able to see how you're actually feeling. And it even starts, it asks you a certain part of the day. It gives you like a, a rating scale from like super happy. It's got this big old huge happy face to, you know, like I'm really down, like not feeling good. Mm-hmm. This is a way to be able to keep track. And I, I recommend it as a lot of different realms and a lot of different uh folks are looking at mental the, the importance of mental health for folks dailyo is a free app now they do have a, a paid version but dailyo is a free app that people can use to be able to help keep up with your you know your mental health is important and of course right. it's important to you you know if you want to be able to it's almost like having a daily journal sitting right in front of you and because it's private because you want your stuff you can even lock it with a password if you want to so it's really, it's really nice. It's good, something good to be able to track how you're feeling, track what you're doing, just see how your day was. Excuse me, see how your day was. And I think everybody this day and age with everything that's going on, the stress of adulting and and uh, even yeah. not adulting, even young folks, uh, young folks of all ages. Matter the of stress fact, of high schooling or middle schooling. The stress of high schooling, just to go ahead and be able to put your thoughts out or whatever, write out kind of like, and, and it's an app, you know, it's pretty, it got a lot of icons and stickers basically on it that you're using to say what you've done in the day. And then there's at the very last part is the part for the note. If you want to go ahead and leave like a note, like how you're feeling to be able to explain that uh, and just to put put back. And sometimes repetition is really good. So I, I, I highly recommend the Dailyo app. I've been a, a diehard user of Dailyo. This is 2024. This might be the fourth year I'm using it. Really? So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Daily I'll, great. I'll definitely have to get invested in that because, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, I mean, like you said, like there's a journal option and you can just mm-hmm. rate your days and stuff. And, oh, yeah. Um, but I know that like a lot of therapists will tell you like, uh, you know, keep a journal so you can tell me how you felt, uh, you know, three weeks ago versus just, you know, walking in and you're feeling good today. So you tell me you're doing good. Right. So uh, I know a lot of therapists tell you to keep journals. So that would also be very helpful for people who, you know, don't just keep something by their bedside apart from their phone. Right, right. I've got, and and sometimes it could be this day and age. Some people will be like, "Oh, I don't need to see no therapist. I'm fine. I'm ain't nothing wrong with me." Right, right. right. Even for those folks who would kind of feel that way, I would say Dalio is a fantastic way for you to still be able to measure and be able to say, you know, put put your thoughts out in something pi- uh, private. Just just, and it reminds you daily. It'll tell you at a certain time. It'll ask you, when do you want me to remind you? I tell mine for 8 p.m. And so mm-hmm. every day, roughly around 8 p.m., a little thing pops up. It says, how was your day? And it starts with the little smiley faces going down to a frown. And then ask you to expound upon that if you got a moment. Take time out, put it in there, and keep going about your day. So it's real interesting. Okay. Yeah, very mm-hmm. cool. Now, Sabir, uh, one of our friends up here at NPB told me the other day, mm-hmm. Kobe, uh, they told me uh, – we always talk about modern technology and AI and everyday tech, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. all of our stingers are uh, everything before the show is old '90s, '80s. Oh, man, man, and like like the the, the contra that we yeah. just had, and the NBA Jam, and the bruh, that's that just takes me back, man. That, that's a good point. That's a good point. Thank right. you, Kobe. You're, you're exactly right. Yeah, so I'll have to work on that at some point. But we've been hey, talking. That's fine, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like yeah. them. I like them to an extent, but we'll see mm-hmm. about it. We're talking yeah. about goal setting and tracking apps to help you succeed this morning between your calls and emails. Um, so we've talked about Smart Gym. We've talked about Bookly. We've talked about uh, Dalio mm-hmm. Gola. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one. <clears throat> on the TechCrunch list is Pocket Guard, which is a budgeting app. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so you can link your bank account, and it compares your income with your expenses that you see on the app. Um, so it, it and you can also look at your. It looks at your recurring bills, allows you to set spending goals for every month. Um, so you know it. It really. <clears throat> excuse me. It really. Um, sets you up for success as far as setting goals and putting yourself in a position to succeed. Um, you know, uh, as far as park, pocket guard is concerned, you know, a lot of people will have these recurring bills that they don't even realize they're paying, like these two dollars right. a month, three dollars right. a month, seven dollars a month. These random bills that you don't really go back to 
And, you know, these kinds of apps will look at them and be like, hey, did you know you're still paying for this weird app that you downloaded two years ago? Oh, excuse me. I, I, that made me laugh. I was like, <laughs> I had, I've had that happen a few times. I think, uh, and also like Google payments and Google sc- subscriptions. Like I've got, again, I got an Android. It reminds you to be like, hey, this is coming up. Are you still using this? It, it, it reminds me. I don't know if that's a regular thing or not, but that is really good about Pocket Guard. I know a lot of folks are doing, they have apps that are doing that similar thing so that people aren't wasting money. That's, yeah, that's, that's really good. That's really good. I, yeah. I probably should get that one too. <laughs> yeah. And it'll yeah. also tell you like, you know, you've already spent, you know, four hundred dollars on groceries this month and it's the the 15th so right. you know really think about what you're doing next or if you've eaten right. out too much this month you can say i i only want to eat out two hundred dollars worth this month yeah and you know idea. it'll it'll tell you you're kind of reaching that limit <laughs> you might want to go home and make a sandwich yeah <laughs> you know, yeah make, yeah you might want to I don't know. Go hunt for some quail or something. <laughs> just, just something. You, you're, you're spending too much money there, Sabir. Calm yeah. down. I, yeah. You know, no. If I, I, I don't, I don't need an app. I've got my wife now. I'm playing. Right. <laughs> you, 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 be like, look, uh, we've gotten. We go to some of our favorite spots, and she'll be like, all right, uh, we probably should go ahead and tone down on that. She'll, she'll get on me about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also other apps called some something like App Block, which functions how it sounds. The average mm, smartphone yeah. user spends about six hours a day on their phone, and AppBlock allows you to set time limits on how long or what time of day you can be on an app. So if That's I come good. in and I say, like, you know, I don't want to be on Twitter the whole time that I'm on lunch, so I'll I'll just you know set a you know a ten minute timer or say I can't be on uh, Twitter from twelve to one p.m. and it won't let me on. The AppBlock will not let me on the Twitter. The Twitter I said. Um, <laughs> so if I, if it's an initiative to like, you know, That's read sweet. during lunch or something like that, or, you know, go out and, you know, talk to your wife, something like that. <laughs> right, 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 right. You'd be like, Hey, uh, you need, go ahead and text. Oh, my wife and I text each other all day. We, <laughs> we will right. text each other. We're at work or whatever, checking in. I'll be like, Hey, you, you, you about to lose it over there. We, we just have a good little laugh. <laughs> We have a good laugh. Yeah. She'd be like, who done broke something now? <laughs> we, we go back and forth laughing. Between that and jokes, it's always hilarious. Right, yeah. Um, at Block, uh, importantly, also offers a parental control setting, uh, which oh, can nice. send usage information as a, to a designated parent, which could be especially useful for those on a limited data usage plan. So right. I, right. that's just the first thing that come to my mind, comes to my right. mind. That's not something that was said in the the list is just that like if you are concerned about your child you know if you are on a limited data usage plan you know you say your kid can only use five gigs of data a day um it'll cut them off at that point right and also keep them from getting on it after hours when they should be asleep (laughs) right right yeah absolutely and the very last one that we uh the tech crunch list listed was Sunnyside, which is an mm. app that is used to track drinking habits. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so very cool. That. And it, it qualifies yeah. and quantizes your success in inspirational terms. So, you know, a- anyone can, like, there's plenty of timers or, you know, anything out there on the, on the app store that says uh, it's been 200 days since the last time you clicked this. But Sunnyside yeah. is specific for, you know, alcoholic drinking habits. Um, gotcha. And it'll say, you know, instead of saying 150 days since the last time you clicked this, it'll say you've had 150 nights of great sleep or better sleep. Mm. And it'll say, right. you know, because of your previous drinking habits, you've saved $4,000 from spending less on alcohol in the last 200 days. Wow. So something that, like that. That'll definitely, that'll definitely that'll change inspire it. you. That'll inspire you. Um, but that'll yeah, definitely, that'll definitely inspire you. Yes, indeed. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, that's gonna that's gonna be it. I appreciate you, Sabir. We, yeah, no uh, problem. We kind of no just no hung out for a little bit today. That's and that's all good. I love it. Glad to be here. And and thank you. Thanks, Larry, for uh, asking us that question, doing follow up. And I hope uh, hope everything works out well for him. Absolutely. So thanks for helping myself and our callers out. If you missed any of the show, download the MPB Public Media app or check out the podcasting app. 
Everyday Tech is brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and generous contributions from listeners. Our show today was actually engineered by guest engineer Trey Campbell, who's interning here from JSU. Call screener was Will Pickering and Charles Arnold. I've been your host, Abram Nanny, also the podcast producer. Thanks for tuning in. Up next is Dr. Jimmy right here on the original Southern Remedy on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.